Sustainable development education at our high schools encourages students to work on sustainability projects that identify the problems as well as exploring opportunities to create solutions. Staff and students of Argyle Alternative have been pioneers in sustainable projects related to alternative energy sources and composting. They have won many awards for their environmental initiatives like Excellence in Sustainability Award and Recognition at United Nations Conference, second place in Canada's Greenest School Competition and many more. Yeah, at Argyle we're kind of fortunate we've been doing this for a long time. We have a wind turbine the first in Manitoba on top of the school. Our outdoor classroom, we have a huge solar panel on there also, which is connected. We run both AC and DC from it, uh, right into the science classroom. It feeds off the roof. Uh, uh, we have a pure sign inverter, again running AC and DC power where we can grow plants. Uh, so we've been doing that. We, can, we try to integrate it into almost every subject. We also do school-wide composting. Angel here does a lot of it, and I have some other students that do it with me. My name's Angel. Uh, my name's Kyla, and we're two Argyle students. Uh, we are the compost program here. We gather decomposable waste in these compostable bags, and then we take them out to the three-compartment compost bin in the back. We also do red wiggler worms, um, vermi composting, and inside, are a bunch of red worms. They do all of the work for the decomposing. So after they've already eaten all of the food and all the soil that we've added in, because we wanted a larger amount of it so it could go amongst the trees and other plants, it becomes kind of like this. So yeah, this is kind of mature. It's your compost, finished compost. Many schools have been working on active research related to Arctic climate change. Kelvin High School students regularly travel to Churchill in the summer and in October to participate in climate change research. Students also photograph bears via Tundra buggy and are then able to analyze their photographs and compare them when they're back at Kelvin. In December 2016, Elmwood High School hosted the Arctic Climate Change Youth Forum in association with Schools on Board and Arctic Outreach Program. Over 150 students from 32 schools across Manitoba assembled for a day to learn and create awareness about climate change in the Arctic. The keynotes and workshops provided participants with unique insights and challenges. When you go into outer space, if you're on the space shuttle, you see this and they call it the blue limb. And that blue limb is receiving a lot of greenhouse gases from our activities as human beings on the planet. We rely on fossil fuels for energy. Those fossil fuels are liberated into the atmosphere and they go into this layer and they're warming the planet. And this warming of the planet has very serious implications for us as a species. It has almost nothing to do with the planet whatsoever. What it's going to do is it's going to affect our habitat. So our habitat as people is what's at stake here with climate change. Grade 1 students of Sister McNamara are also studying adverse effects of climate change and have a tip on how to save the polar bears and save the earth from warming up. The culinary art program of Tech High School introduced the concept of aquaponics growing and learning center to grow herbs and microgreens using less water. Basically in an aquaponic system, the fish feed the plants through process of the bacteria in the water, it takes the fish waste and it converts it into useful nutrients for the plants. The water will cycle through the, all of the plant beds and it will eventually work its way back into the fish tank and through that the plant roots will filter out the water and anything not needed for the fish. So it's basically a symbiotic relationship between the plants and the fish. We started the aquaponics because we were trying to grow our own herbs and lettuce and microgreens uh, in soil but we had a lot of watering issues in culinary. So then we discovered aquaponics is an option that has water. We wanted to link with science because science, um, they can learn about the fish and the pH and maintaining the water. Social studies does the life cycle, so they're part of it that way. We can also use, because microgreens have super nutrients in it. So the lunch program, the mother program, and, um, and in culinary as well, we can use it as a super booster of nutrients for our students. So we're really promoting a lot more health in what we're serving. 
And then we were able to collaborate with graphics for all the art. So we had welding be a part of it, carpentry be a part of it, drafting did the drawings and the design, um, auto helped with the plumbing. So really the whole school was collaborative on the whole project here at the Aquaponics Checkbox Growing and Learning Center. Why do some people have more and some people don't have enough? What do we need to do differently in order to live in a healthy environment? What are human rights? How can we protect people's rights? These are the types of questions that we ask when we are learning about sustainable development. We encourage families to start thinking about their answers. We hope our education for sustainable development inspires more and more young people to take action and consider all their choices so that they may make a positive change for a better world.